I'm so glad he didn't hire me. Mm. I'm so glad. Sometimes failures in life, I think, is not a failure. Or, or the outcome you expect is a great thing to happen. Hey everybody, we're here with Stefano Alcantara. Uh, he's an incredible artist painter person we're really excited to have him here and talk about his life story and how he got to where he is today like people have no idea about this and and when i when i made a post and a few friends put me a post we get i think i get good comments and super bad comments. A lot of bad comments. A lot of bad, yeah. I would say 50-50. What I was expecting with the last post I did, also with with the, with the pulling down to down. people, whatever, that it was compl- it was the almost 100% yeah. positive about well, it. Well, I, I, mm. I don't know. I feel like most of the comments that I saw about the Magic Ink are just about how it's not safe. Safe, yeah. exactly. But how do you know? Exactly. It's the same as religion, whatever. How do you know? You, mm. you are you are certain mm. that yeah. something exists or not exists. Yeah. How do you know? You don't even know what it is. How you can say that's dangerous. <laughs> but if you if you do the read ingredients, do you know? Nobody knows. So how do you say it's unsafe? Yeah. Mm. You're just talking because that's what you you think it is, but mm. you're not talking for from science. Yeah. Mm. So I think it, ignorance sometimes it can be very like. I don't know. Yeah. You go to your head and you know, oh, this is dangerous. And how do you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, how you be sh- how, how you can be sure about it? Yeah. Do you what get, do you know? Yeah. <laughs> do you get do bad you, comments like that very often? Just on that video. I never get bad comments just on that video. But I I I I leave it. I don't I don't I don't mind. I don't get um, at this age in my life I don't I don't get Don't get upset by no, it. No, no, no. I I really enjoy it. I enjoy it, and it doesn't really face me in any way. I'm like, oh my god! You know, it's, it's not also, personal. It me, huh? It's not personal. It's about it's not, them. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. And also, it's like they don't know. Yeah. That will make me laugh a little bit because, oh, that's uh, just a cancer is coming, <laughs> wave of cancer, <or> whatever. <laughs> I would like to reply all of them, but it's, I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't. I don't rather reply. No, I will reply. No I could. I could reply, but I could reply of somebody who knows. Yeah. To have a you know a, a, a real conversation. Man, I I read that this is this because that happened and it's a it's a real concern, scientific concern. I get that, but if it's something like oh, this is gonna be so bad, it's like <laughs> I can say. <laughs> You can say anything. This is going to be so bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't want to have a real discussion. They just Well, most yeah, of the time shit. they're not tattooers or they've been tattooing for a year. But people say stuff like that. Or 20 years. <laughs> they're pissed about Yeah, and, and tattooers do not like change. They hate change. So, of course, like if you talk about... Um, like being put down to sleep and maybe like how that could be dangerous and stuff. Like we're all for that. The moment you are like, look at this change in the industry, magic ink. They're like, no, no. <laughs> you know, tattoos and I, hate and I change. I think I was a person too. too at some point. I was a person too. Mm. I didn't want to change my coils for rotary pens. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'm loyal to the coil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was hashtag loyal to the coil. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. But until until you try it, you're like, oh my God, I think this is very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's easier to travel. Mm-hmm. It hits strong. For mm-hmm. me, it took me one tattoo to actually figure it out. One, the transition was super easy. I never went back to coils. But that opened my mind to be able to you know, allowed new things to come in my life, and I and I, I don't think I'm, I'm I'm a stubborn person anyway. I change, I evolve, not change, I evolve. Yes. In anything. Yes. If not, I will still, you know, I'm vegan. Mm-hmm. What a more more change in your life can have than that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You have to be very open-minded to actually hear somebody to say to say about 
that and you really, really think about it and understand and you're like, I think you're right. You have a point. Yeah. And really apply it, you know, think it because it, it takes it takes a lot of time to actually decide to do something that extreme because the whole planet living in another way. Yeah. yeah. You are going against the entire planet. Yeah. Not against, but I mean, you are not living like, like, I think vegans are like zero points. It's like nothing, not even 1%. Wow. Not yeah. even 1% of the world. Yeah. Well, it made you want to become vegan. Can we talk about that? Yes, yes, yes. I would love to. Yeah. And like, yeah, I can, I can say it now. Okay, we can say it later. Um, but um, at the beginning, it didn't start for animals or anything like that. Later, I became vegan. Before, I, I was like a plant-based. Mm. That is very different. Yeah. Like vegan is like more like, and also I don't like to, to, to call myself vegan because the reason that, you know, vegans have bad reputation or whatever on, on their attitude. Mm. But, but I, the reason I became vegan is because I, I don't agree with abuse mm -hmm. of any living creature in life. Mm. When I was a kid, I, I've been bullied. Mm. and animals have no way to defend themselves they don't have words to speak and i don't want to be part of it i don't want to i don't want any kind of violence in what i put inside of my body mm. and this is when i became vegan i can i can say that after I, I really became vegan for a while my my life the way i see the world i see it completely different i was I'm probably a little more angry person before now it's, um, I don't know, I'm, I don't have any sadness in, in, in my food or tears yeah. or screams or whatever, chemicals, whatever. It changed my DNA, I believe, of, of, of another type of, I don't know, yeah. not dead. Yeah. Not dead, you know? Yeah, so wow. That's why I became vegan. I, I, don't, I don't, you know, like back in the days, slavery was normal. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, and everybody was not no not nobody was saying anything but them. Yeah, and people was like, no, that no, that's normal. That they were animals. Yeah, <coughs> and not too long ago. Yeah, mm. it's, it's the same with animals. People are like, no, this is for us, for us to eat and our service. No, mm. no, 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 it's not like that. They don't want to die. Yeah, yeah, it's like you eat your dog. Yeah. You want you would eat your dog. You eat your dog. Mm -mm. You can you eat another animal. You don't need a dog to eat to survive. You don't need a cow to eat to survive. You don't need a chicken to eat to survive. You don't need. Mm. It's just pure pleasure. Yeah. Mm. Because in another in an, in India, you know the the cows are sacred. Right. Yeah. Right. They're not dying of of. The, protein deficiency because the whole hundreds of millions of people not eating cow in their own lives never in their life they eat that yeah and they are perfectly fine yeah yeah You're you right. don't need it you need milk the same or cow milk in the same level as you need giraffe milk yeah or elephant <laughs> milk yeah that's that's that's, 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 that's that's what you need yeah you don't need you know this is just for your pleasure yeah, yeah. You're right. Totally. So I'd rather not. Yeah. So nothing. it was. Uh, did you look into it just randomly? You're like, let me let me look into this, or did you see something, or what was the switch for you? That's, well, I started for my dad got cancer. Mm. So it, for me, it didn't start as a animal thing. Mm. For me, it started as a health. And my dad was um, prohibited to, to eat meat, red meat. Mm. They don't say anything about fish or chicken or, or pork or whatever. They said red meat. If you want to get cancer again, eat red meat and sugar. Wow. And and he's he's alive still. He's alive. Yeah. He yeah. he's a, he's also plant based. Wow. He didn't he has every exam he have he have for a PSA for for prostate cancer and stuff like that he's or zero or one that 
is below average person. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Before he was, you know, having having like a regular American diet, or whatever. He was like just. Not everybody have a cancer, but he he have more the genes to get that type yeah. of cancer, and I have the same. I did a, a um, an allergy or intolerant test. Yeah. And I'm a hundred percent intolerant to beef. Really? As well, yeah. Wow. And I love for all my life. Yeah. I was the guy doing the the, the the in the grill. I was that guy doing yeah. the grill. I wow. was the guy in the barbecue. I was the organizer. I was I was the guy who was like meat yeah. supporter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I make fun of vegans. <laughs> wow. I so I make fun of vegetarians. My fr I have a couple friends vegetarian and I was making fun every day. I was an asshole. <laughs> 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 I was that guy. I was. I never, never want to stop eating meat. I was that guy. Never. It's impossible. Mm. And look at me now. Yeah. Eight years. Eight years. Well, and you were vegetarian before that too, I was. Right? Yes, it is. Yes, I don't eat wow. meat, meat for like, or chicken or or pork for fifteen years. Wow. Or sixteen years. No, something like that. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. And you feel good. I you feel, feel lighter. I feel great, yeah. We can jump higher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. What will will power up first and then oh just the God. the empathy that you have is really astounding. I think so. I'm not uh, yeah. I cannot I I will I will be if I have to eat animal meat, it's the same doubt that I will have to eat a human meat. Mm. I put them in the exact same level. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I, in, the, in the same way, it's like, oh, I mean, a cow, whatever, for me, it's indifferent. Mm. At the end, is somebody was sacrificed there for to eat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to have a hamburger for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I feel big. You know when 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 I when I see it now as for outside, I, I believe in my mind like it's very egocentric. It's like a, a why why we we have to take lives just for for a burger. Yeah. yeah. Is that more important a burger than um, the life of a, of a living creature that doesn't want? They have a, a they have a a, 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 a daughter or son. Well, not son or not, but I mean like a, a yeah. small baby. Yeah. Is it really, really? Do you want to know? Fuck it. I want to get a burger. Yeah. Die and your babies. You, you, I think I see many videos of you know the how how the the, the cows or the pork they cry when they take away their babies and mm. they run, they escape, trying to follow the baby that they're taking it down. They they fight. Yeah, it's fucked up. But the reason why we eat why we eat them and we don't eat, for example, a bear. Or something like that. We don't. Why we don't eat a lion? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Probably the meat is very delicious as well. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't have how to defend. They're the most, the most peaceful animals. Mm. Gentle animals, like a dog, yeah. a cow. They go, you can pet a cow, and they will. She will feel. You. That's why we eat them because they don't have the way to defend themselves. Yeah. Mm. So we are freaking abusers of those those animals, mm. and, and I don't. I don't, I don't want I don't want to abuse any kind of creature, but I don't want. That's yeah. powerful. Yes. That's well, you're powerful. um. You're. You're not like one of those uh, vegans that gives you guys a bad reputation, because you're not very vocal about it. We've been hanging out for. Yes. Three days. Yes. And this is the first time we've really talked about it. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, if they don't, people don't ask me, I don't say anything. Yeah. But if you ask me about it. Of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna say because because yeah. you're asking me why. Yeah, yeah. totally. But um, if not, no, I don't eat. Eh, I don't eat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's powerful. That yeah. might you know it's definitely making me think, and a lot of the viewers probably think too. I think it's a few. Um, I watch a lot of things. I get in, on, on when I get interested on things. I I um I start like uh, investigating and seeing points of view yeah. of things, you know, in, on any, in anything. And I'm up to to change and get better and, and, and learn from other people. 
Because yeah. I don't know everything. Maybe you can tell me something that make me think, and I'm like, wow, you're right. Mm. I'll be wrong all my life. And that's the, and that's one of the things that people are so afraid of. Uh. In, in in everything, like mm -hmm. I've been I've been wrong all my life. Yeah. And in in, you rather don't accept and say no, 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 fuck it, whatever. Yeah. I don't want to think about it, and I just want to continue my life. So I don't, you know. But I think I was wrong all my life. So. Well, and I think that ties back into tattooing too, because. You know, like Deanna mentioned, mm -hmm. seems like a lot of tattoo artists are pretty resistant to change. But you want to tell everybody how long you've been tattooing? 30 years. 30 years. That's a long That's time. That's amazing. And it's funny because we just um, did an episode with Squire Strahan, and we were talking about this saying that, you know, once you've been tattooing for 30 years, you can either be one of those guys that somebody's like, uh, yeah, he's been tattooing 30 years. Or it could be the guy that people say, he's been tattooing 30 years. Right. And that's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I Thank interpret you. it as either, well, you know, he's been tattooing for 30 years. Like, that's why his work isn't good. Or, yeah, he's been tattooing for 30 years. That's exactly. why his work is amazing. Exactly. You know, and, and you're one of the examples of, like, you've been doing this for 30 years and you're continuing to grow and learn and pushing yourself. You're successful. You're, you're what we all hope and strive to be Thank when we you. hit 30 Thank years. You. And just to be open-minded, too. I mean, it's so important to, you know, if you realize that a rotary is more effective than a coil, yes. you got to move on. I, you know? I, I, and, that's, I, and, that, and for that to be okay. You know? Yes, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And I think, um, I don't think I picture myself, well, I have friends who tattoo for 30 years as well, and, but they s s stick with their old way, their old ways, they, they are afraid of change, but I, I can, I really think I live in the present, and mm -hmm. when I go to a convention, I still feel young to try to, you know, with the same energy to try to make my best work and be relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you start losing the 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 hunger or of learning, or mm -hmm. you know, you know everything because I have thirty years, I know everything. Mm, yeah. And then you want to start dying. Yeah. Yes. Totally. I seen you work yesterday. I'm like, oh my God, what you doing? Okay, this also I should try something like that. I'm I'm thinking like. <laughs> Mm. Something more than you know. I I, make, I get excited because uh, you know it's not a way I work and stuff like that. So I really, I really, I'm always hungry to learn. Yeah, I'm always hungry to learn. You know, and and uh, and. Uh, Are we gonna see some color realism from you soon? Oh my god! So. Well, I I moved to New York doing color realism for mm. color realism. I used to be a color realistic guy wow. for years. That was that's how I moved to Las Rites to to New York. Wow. I want to take a second to talk about Allegory Ink. I've been using Allegory Black Ink for some time now, and it's been the best black ink I've ever used. It's really consistent, really black, and I haven't used anything else since. They also have Ultra Black if you need that extra punch. Use the code EDEN20 for 20% off your order. I want to get into your, your, your tattoo career story. Yeah, I do too. I want so, to know about it. So where, where are you from? Mm -hmm. I'm from Lima, Peru. Mm. Um, been tattooing for 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm born and raised there. I moved uh, uh, when I was 30 to the United States. First to Florida, and then um, and then to New York. And so you were you were tattooing for 13 years, 13 years or so before you moved to the before states. Before I moved to the states, yes. So so how did you you were you were really young when you got into it? How did you get into it? Yes, 18 18 years old. Um, just out of school, I started my, uh, my graphic design career mm -hmm. because I, I wanted to study fine art, to be 100% honest. I want to study painting. My, my great-grandfather was a painter. I have paintings all over the house of my grandma, my, my, my dad, my, my, my house, you know. He have a, a collection on the walls, and I was like, I love painting. I yeah. want to be a painter. He, have, he was doing um, <clears throat> oil paintings, and he was doing... Um, almost like cartoon too, very political um, covers for for a for us um, like a weekly 
magazine. So for me, that was how the, what I was seeing in the walls, for me, that was magic. I didn't know how, how he could accomplish something real in a, in a camera. Anyways, um, and, and, um, and then I wanted to do that, but it was the 90s, early 90s, a president just changed in the in in 1990. Mm -hmm. I got out of school in '93. It was in the middle of the like a war in between uh, two terrorist groups and and the government. Mm. So, in my 16, 17 year old, 18 years old, it was we have a lot of um, bombs in the streets. We have a lot of attacks in the streets again you know between these two groups not, not to civilians until it was a very important um uh, tragedy i want to call it of a of a bomb that it, that destroyed one big street full of civilians and uh, mm -hmm. it, and there was when everything went down in peru mm -hmm. and um because before it was, they were attacking just military bases, they were attacking uh, police stations and not civilians, but the, when, when th that happened, everything changed and, 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 and we were lacking of even food in the supermarkets, um, stuff like that, like they blocked the street, the, the, the roads to, to get access to, to, to different, um, you know, or or fruits or, or rice or whatever yeah. they, they were, we were lacking. Everybody was talking in their houses with things buying, you know. Uh, so there was there were weird times, you know. Wow. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah, 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 yeah. In a lot of like, um, <clears throat> we lose power like every week, you know, for one day, two days until they rebuild a tower of electricity that they were bombing. So they want to create ca chaos and 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 take the take the power on the government. So, for me to think about being a painter, who's gonna buy my paintings uh, with that situation? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wanna buy a beautiful painting and put it in my house. Nobody was thinking. People were thinking about what's gonna happen with this world, and we're gonna get out of here. A lot of people were migrating outside. People were leaving to Venezuela. People were leaving to I remember uh, to United States or Europe. Mm. So in my mind was. I want to start, even if I, I love to draw, I love to, what should I do to get a salary and have a living, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I decided to study graphic design. At least I can work in an agency. Graphic design always going to exist because always going to be magazines, so it's going to be, you know, TV, whatever. You can design, you know, products and, yeah. and stuff like that. So, um but I always wanted to, to paint. It was not a career of illustration in my country at that time. Mm -hmm. Now it is, but th that didn't exist, illustration um, career. They were just painters uh, hired for, for illustration for newspapers and stuff like that. Um, and that's how I, how I, uh, I started in, in a little bit, because also, when I started graphic design, it's different than studying graphic design now. That is all computers, all iPads, all the, the, over there. In that moment, computers were starting to be part of. Yeah. Of so I was doing the um, imagine the 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 ads for the newspaper. We wouldn't do it digitally. We do it manually. Yeah. We we glue it in this thicker uh, cardboards and and we have to go to a place to make it perfectly professional uh, so you cannot print it in your own printer in your house yeah. and it was like a like a manual uh, very perfect with the ruler and everything and they measure everything so it had to be perfect mm. so same with colors so I pretty much have a, um, um, a career of art mixed with graphic design we, we have these big uh, panels of gradients of color we have to do with, with tempera I don't know tempera. How to say it in English? Oh, similar tempera. I think it's uh, it is. Sure. It, it is like um, it is like similar than acrylic, but yeah. doesn't dr doesn't dry too um, plasticky. It dries oh, okay. more chalky. Mm. 
Okay. Oh, okay. In Peru, it's called tempera. I don't, I don't, I don't know the name in English. In English, but anyways, so I have to mix the color. So I got really good in, in get tones. Yeah. Mm. In color, so everything was, you know, painting, with brushes and color pencils and stuff like that. We were doing, mm. and also, give me the the the. Um, like we as a tattoo artist, we are commission artists. Yeah. We work for a customer that I like, that I like. And graphic designer is also commission work. You have a client that asks you for a service and you provide it, he's happy, he pay you. Yeah. And f a fine artist, do whatever they like, whatever their heart desire, I want to paint, whatever, whatever you like. And then if you like it, you buy it. If you don't like it, yeah. you, know, you don't sell it. Yeah. Mm. So, I think that was great for my tattoo career because I knew how to, I learned how to to talk with the customer and, 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 and listen to it and, and, and provide something that they really want. Um, my friend um, Alvaro, from, um, on my, on my, on my um, first year of graphic design, we immediately, I met, I met him. Um, he's still one of my best friends. Uh, now oh, he's living in LA now graphic designer for, for clothing companies. He's wow. very successful, very, very, very good one. And um, he brought a tattoo magazine for me. And I never saw a tattoo before in my life. And I always were, I was drawing always, or the teacher, I was always drawing in you the class. You, you never saw a tattoo? I never saw a, or artistic tattoo. I saw a tattoo very bad, maybe in the street, maybe with, 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 uh, with a needle and one letter like that. It was yeah. Not, you, you but it not, wasn't it wasn't really a thing no, in Peru no, at that time. I never saw a uh, artistic tattoo in any way in Peru. Wow. It was not tattoo shops. So everything was or made in jail. Yeah. It was not appealing for me. Yeah. A tattoo. Yeah. I never thought I would get a tattoo. Mm. But until I saw the magazine. He bought uh, the magazine's a tattoo. The the name tattoo, the brand tattoo magazine. And uh and it blew my mind. Seeing all these people fully covered tattoo with colors and everything. What, like, what the hell is this? Where is this? Here in the United States is a culture for decades. I know 50 years of or more yeah. of tattoo culture that we that, that I never experienced or, or seen. Mm. Um, and in the magazine, it was an ad of Hawk Spalding, Spalding and Rogers kit, tattoo kit. For five hundred bucks, nice. It comes with ink, yeah. two machines, <laughs> like f six needles, ink cups, a, like a little bit of everything you need to start tattooing. Yeah, in yes. a book. Yeah, in a book that is called A to Z of tattooing. So wow. I, that was my apprenticeship. <laughs> <laughs> what was this in English? In English, I didn't wow. speak English. But it, <laughs> But but he have drawings. Okay. <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah. It's all I need. I was doing the the hand with a little. And back in those days, they they used the paper towel in the two fingers, and they you see old school tattoo artists. They are like this, and then they wipe like this. They don't yeah. they don't grab it in the other hand. <laughs> you do whatever they want. Throw. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and so did you did you have any tattoos when you started tattooing? Yes, when I started tattooing, yes. Uh, um, or what about when you saw the magazine? When you, I saw the magazine, no, 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 none, none. No, nobody I knew, I knew had a had a had a tattoo. And I told my dad, uh, Dad, um, I want to get this tattoo kit. I said, Why? I said, I, think I, I said, I like it. So right at that time, um, I was listening to a radio, like a like a like a rock rock station in, in Peru and and I heard uh, uh, advertising of a tattoo, tattoo shop or a tattoo guy whatever because it's not a shop so I think I have to have a tattoo before I start tattooing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. Naturally, yeah, yeah so I called and uh, my friend Ramon now he's a good friend of mine he, he lives in Sweden still tattooing very good tattoo artist and uh, I went I went to his house where he was the shop in, in his room mm -hmm. in one in one little corner and 
I remember clearly everything, and it was so rustic, you know, mm. very rustic. You know, a little corner with magazines on the side and, and, sten and stencils around in the wall. He saw that he saw the needle right there for me, so the show is 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 brand new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Super sterile. <laughs> <laughs> and um and start tattooing it was so painful it was so <laughs> painful i was like wow this is, cannot be right which one is it it is in my it's in my shoulder but it's already covered uh -huh. it was, it's already covered it okay. was a a tattoo that one of my favorite singers uh, max cavalera having his forum uh, singer of mm, sepultura nice. it was like a like a like a dark jesus kind of thing Nice. <laughs> so you Same. so you got the got the tattoo. I got the tattoo, and then I already had my kid at home. I already had a kid at home, but I wanted to 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 experience it before I do it on somebody else. Yeah, I was so afraid to do my first tattoo, but I already had the experience, so I I I took two hours to do a flower this big. How afraid I was! Wow. I didn't know how deep to go. Right. I, I, I I didn't know anything. It's scary. It's scary. It's scary. Yeah. I didn't. I wish I had an apprenticeship. Mm. I really wish it would save me so much time. Mm. So for me, my apprenticeship was tattooing my friends from graphic design school on the on the weekends. That was my apprenticeship. Yeah. Yeah. And seeing seeing them how they heal, and then some of them fell completely the tattoo because I was too afraid to go deeper. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know. Until little by little I was starting to okay how we go deeper. I was just seeing seeing the process until eventually, you know start to figure it I out. Started to figure it out. Yeah. How deep and mm. I lose a fear and that's it. So how long were you doing the weekend tattoos before you started doing it? There were three years of my career. I was I, I, I had a little extra room in the house like a little apartment in the back of the of the of the house that i completely make it in a tattoo studio yeah thing. and so at, at the time where you you were still studying graphic design graphic design yes. and were you were you thinking that you were going to make a career out of tattooing or was it just something no, that you were doing for hobby. fun yeah no i didn't i never thought i would be tattooing permanently i just like it i just want to do it same as i i I like to paint a wall, or I was painting um, yeah. a, a bike. Yeah, you know, another m surface to express your art, kind of. Yeah. Thing. yeah. But I realized to do it well, it was not like painting a wall. You paint a wall, and the wall doesn't heal. The mm -hmm. you know, you paint it, and it's how it is. It's never gonna change unless it's sun over over like a few years. Years, yeah. But tattooing to accomplish what I had in my mind or what I was seeing in the magazine, you have to you have to work for years to actually have that detail or have that confidence or have that knowledge to have perfect fair, perfect shadings. So it was not overnight. So until I was not able to accomplish that, I have to continue practice. Yeah. So so that was not a one time thing at all. It was starting to become something that I want to get good at and I and I love the process of having a client and the happiness afterwards yeah oh thank you so much wow this is ama it's amazing a canvas cannot give you that yeah. yeah yeah definitely the the personal connection that you have with your tattoo clients it's way different than even if you do a commission artwork for somebody exactly. you know, or a painting exactly right. Right. nothing compares to a tattoo mm. nothing not art form even if you do the most amazing sculptural or piece of art in your wall they will be oh my god thank you so much you want to be looks amazing in my living room or whatever Nothing. but it's not in your body yeah you're not changing identity of people absolutely also when you are tattooing somebody you create a connection you create a connection with that artist and if you like the artist probably you like the tattoo more i think absolutely me, right? absolutely yeah, I want to get a tattoo by my friend that is a super nice guy, and I and I love that guy. So I want to just get a tattoo by him, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, even if he's amazing tattoo artist, and I don't like his personality, I will never get a tattoo. 
Absolutely. It's terrible when you have a tattoo and you didn't connect with the artist and then you just kind of look at it forever and remember that experience. It's so important to I provide so. a good experience yeah, for your client. Yeah, I think so. What style did you first kind of get into? I, I want to know, like, because I, I guess I didn't realize that you were doing color portraits at first. So yes. what, would, what was the transitions in your styles from the very beginning to mm -hmm. now? Well, at the beginning I was doing everything that it was in Tattoo Magazine, in those four that I had. <laughs> yeah. And um, who were the tattooers at that time that you saw in the magazines that you really liked? At that time, I remember in the, later when I was reading the names and everything, it was Brian Everett, Jack Rudy, mm. Freddie Negretti, um, nice. Guy Atchison, Paul Booth. Yes. Um, who else? That um, Aaron Kane. Um, those, those were the people that I... I was looking, you know, I was like, wow, I love Aaron King work. I was like, wow, Guy Atchison. Yeah. So bold. Paul Booth. Yeah. I was like, he was tattooing my favorite metal bands. I have <laughs> a magazine. I remember that it was like uh, rock and roll tattoos, I remember. And there was Paul Booth with Biohazard, Pantera, and Sepultura doing a tour. And I was like, how that can be possible? How, <laughs> like, yeah. I want to How a that. tattoo artist fits <laughs> in a in a metal tour yeah yeah wow. and then later uh, you know working for paul and 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 knowing he was doing a tattoo the earth what is an amazing idea and he, he was doing you know traveling with them and making the small conventions you know with 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 a, with a, with a band yeah and tattooing them on the road and what some cool videos when he was tattooing uh, i don't remember i think the guy from Biohazard. i don't remember right now doing a collaboration with philly blue in a hotel room it was like that history of tattooing. It was yeah, like, I yeah. was like, wow. That's that amazing. had to be so cool for you. Amazing. Especially as a, as a fan of those bands. Yes. Later in life, I end up living in New York working for Paul. Mm. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Crazy. But, well, but going back to that to that, to that question, um, I was doing everything that I see in there, from a Tasmania Devil on, on to Tribal. Mm. Anything, I was doing anything. But was it was a realism at this point or not yet? It was in black and gray, like um, by um, Brian Everett. That's the one I saw first black and gray. Um, I still cannot remember, I, or it was not a, the name. It was I remember a guy playing the saxophone. That was probably the that that the tattoo that it made me fall in love of, of of tattooing. I don't even know who was the artist. It was a it, it was a, a guy playing the saxophone in a, some kind of purple blues colors, mm. and I was like, I cannot believe you can do that in skin. I'm telling you, wow. that was in 2000 and ni ni 1992, 19 yeah, wow. wow, very high quality tattoos. I was like, wow, um, but I was not even close to be able to accomplish that. Well, is that kind of what gave you the realization that you needed to do it full time if you wanted to get to that point? Did it full time. Um, but it wasn't a realization of I have to do this f to be better. No. When I finished my career of graphic design, I was hired right away by one of the teachers uh, to, to do a, like an internship in a graphic design um, agency. And they told me, okay, one month for for internship, and if you would like your work, um, you you get hired. Mm. It's okay, perfect. I go. They were paying me very little, not even to cover my expenses to go eat, to go back. <sighs> but that, that was fine. And they finished the month. I was tattooing on the weekends, and I was already three years practicing, or, or, or already charging, not not much, but more than what they were paying me as an intern. So I was making in one weekend more than what we were paying for a month. So, yeah. So I was, uh, um, I finished the month and he told me like, we like your work, we want to stay, but we want you to be intern for two more months. And I was like, it's no way. You told me, I'm, I'm a person of my word. Whatever I say yeah, to you that yeah. I'm gonna do, I do. And to, if, you, if, you, if you tell me you want to do something and you don't do, I'm going to believe you don't have a word. Mm. 
and he told me that he will hire me. I very literal on things in, in even now when 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 I um when I hire an artist, for example, yeah. I believe in the word of people mm. until they don't or yeah. they stick with that and and if you tell me you're gonna be working at the shop for one year, two years, three years, and you do it, amazing. And you wanna just go, I, I go, I help you open your you know, your shop, or whatever. But you tell me you come in three years and then you leave after three months, I don't believe in your word. Yeah. I, I would die before I I break my, my word. If I tell you I'm staying that amount of time, even if I'm starving or whatever, I'm gonna finish my word. Yeah. I die before yeah. I change my word. Anyways. Your word is so important to have. So important. Yeah. So important. It's your integrity. It's your, it's your who you are. Yeah. Who you are. Um, I don't know what I was saying. So, uh, <laughs> so they, they said, okay, you got to intern for ah, two yeah, more yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a, a huge and awesome for me lesson of life that, um, that they didn't do what they wanted going to do and to say, okay. So I, in my mind was, if they don't hire me, I want to open my tattoo shop. I told him, I make more in one weekend than what you pay me here. And I'm going to open my tattoo shop. And the guy was like, people get tattooed? And it's a long time ago, he said, yeah, people get tattooed. <laughs> wow. And you want to be able to leave from that? Say, yeah. Yeah, more than you're paying me. My pay for sure. I'm just starving. <laughs> <laughs> you have a sandwich? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, wow. um, uh, and then I'm so glad he didn't hire me. Mm. I'm so glad. Sometimes failures in life, I think, is not a failure. Or, or the outcome you expect is a great thing to happen. Yeah, it's because he brings you to another route that is pr better. I'm so glad, and that happened to me a few other times in my life. Worse, that at that at the time they were tragedies. They were like horrible. How they I, how how I can have that bad luck or why this happened to me? And that was a, later I realized that was the best thing that happened and bring me to the right and the better opportunities in life. Yeah. So I, I'm always when something go wrong i'm always happy that um expecting the future what is going to be brighter always, yes always for any situation uh, that's that's a great reminder I yes. think for us and any everybody who's listening right now too i think so because we all experience those times where it doesn't go to as planned but mm -hmm. it is just opens a door for another opportunity i think so it's always a better opportunity yeah always a better opportunity i believe that <laughs> And then you got to Paul Booth's shop in amazing, New amazing. York. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, so how did, did, how did, did you, you get there? Well, did you open a shop in, in Lima after that? I opened a shop in Lima yeah. after that mm -hmm. um, near my house in the next uh, Mo Plaza type. Um, oh, but you were out of your house. So this was this was legit. Legit. <laughs> Signing the door and everything. Oh, man. That's why my shops are called Stefano's Tattoo Studio because I never planned to have like a tattoo shop. I wanted to have a studio where I was doing graphic design. I was painting murals and I was tattooing. So I have everything, uh, my tattoo station, I have my computer on the side and the living room was a big mural over there. So I can just provide different things. That's what I, what I like. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was, came the name. But then later another artist came and said, man, can I work with you or whatever? So I'm like, yeah. And then another guy came, we want to work with you, whatever. So in the name always stayed uh, Stefano's Tattoo Studio. Yeah. And, uh, and I never changed it. Mm. So I was um, sponsoring like uh, radio shows and concerts in Peru. So that it, all, it, it always sound, the, the, the name. So even now you go to Peru, like it's, it's already in the, in generation by generation, the name of the shop. Yeah, that's so awesome. So I never, never never change it because this was way before instagram way before instagram mm -hmm. i was um um making advertising in radio or or 
or local newspapers uh, from music and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was it was actually cool because you can see it, you know, open down. Oh, let me see my ad. And yeah. Looking at the ad. Oh, it came out cool. Yeah. And you're, I'm thinking, how many people is gonna see it? And people were coming for the ads on the on the, and also the 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 spreading the word, you know, customer by customer. That's I think is the best even yeah. now. When word people see mouth. your word of mouth, mm-hmm. I think it's the best way, even now, to to get customers. I think mm. even more than Instagram. Yeah, at yeah. least for me, you know, somebody referring you from a nice word that they see in your friend or whatever, that's the best. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And so you did that for ten years. Yeah, the studio in Peru. I had a studio. Yes, it was two thousand. I opened it um, right when uh, ninety seven, ninety six, um, and then I had opportunity to open another studio inside of a. Uh, I was in the suburbs. Yeah, uh, it was not like a downtown Lima. It was a uh, um, yeah, in the suburbs, and. Miraflores is an area, and you see Miraflores is an area more popular, more bars, restaurants, movie theaters, whatever. And in in one nice building would have movie theaters. It was a like a fancy um, for kids uh, hair saloon. And I opened one. They called me to to make one inside a tattoo shop inside. Very nice, very inside the kids inside, hair salon. Not kids, but I mean young, like not 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 kids, but I mean oh, like, like me, like. Exactly, like kids like you guys, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> In their 20s, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Very, very pop, rock and roll thing. Very cool. People getting hair colors and different different colors and stuff. And uh, and I opened a one station, that, 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 two stations. that was my second shop. It was just one station inside of, of that place. And I was like, that's, that's pretty nice. And that's what... Um, I was rotating three times a week, and then the other days, other artists were, were going. So I tried to to have the feel of managing two locations. Wow. And um, what is very hard. What is very hard. Until later on, I learned a better a better system how yeah. to manage uh, multiple shops. I have four shops now, but um, I have great managers and partners that you know solve that problem of micromanaging or trying to do it myself yeah bless you thank you um that i think is better that way for a creative process of an artist absolutely Absolutely. because if you i believe if i I was dying of uh, inside when i was in peru before i moved to new york i think my art was dying Mm. I was not getting better. I was just working. I was uh, have the two locations, and and um, I just didn't have time for for explore deeper what I want to do, different styles or whatever. And when I had the opportunity to start doing guest spots in, in the U.S. or eventually move and be along with other artists, I realized that I didn't have to manage the shop that it was a huge percentage of my day as a business owner and artist. Yeah. So yeah. what I was lacking 100% was the art. Mm-hmm. And when I moved to to here, to the United States, um, I was so happy because when I walk out of the door, I don't have to worry about anything. And that's sometimes what the, I think the new genera- generation of pe- people who are not be the owner, they don't realize. They think it's easy to have a shop. Oh, I want to open my own shop. Oh my God. All the, <laughs> headache, all the bills. All, it's, it's expensive. It's expensive. It's so expensive. And um, I think I still like, you know, to, to, to have, you know, your location because you are in your environment. Even if it's um, not months and months are more for profitable than other ones but that for me not that really like the the the, the goal the goal for me is to have a space that represent you you are comfortable with it and, and work with your friends and I, for me is that I, I don't i don't like to feel like i'm a boss i would like to feel that i'm 
working along with my friends. That, yeah, that's, that's, totally. that's how I approach it, you know. And focus on what you do best. And that's why it like we, we advocate for it, too. Like it's so important for you to focus on what only you can do and hire people to do the rest if mm -hmm. you if you can mm -hmm. or work your way up to that point. And the reason why, like for our shop, too, we provide people to break you down and set you up to do your emails to mm -hmm. take care of everything is, is so that you can thrive in your art and that's how you get better how you get better yeah and and i learned that uh, as you get better the business is gonna do better yes oh absolutely yeah yes if if i start um evolving or or, or my my quality of work start to be dying the business is gonna come down with you so absolutely it's so important to to just for me now I learned to, to focus in art and, and have other people take taking care of, of other other responsibilities. Is you know, my I have my assistant for almost eight years writing my emails. I don't I don't write an email in eight years. Yeah. I hate it. Same. I, can, I cannot do that. Yeah. I cannot you cannot do everything. It's just yeah. I, before I had an assistant I was finished work, eating Starting writing emails until I fall asleep, and then the next day they're writing emails. That's exhausting. Yeah, right. what you need is to rest, and it affects your tattoos. Affects your tattoos exhausted. exactly, exactly. Yeah. If you're one of the countless artists that has ditched that second skin because of all the crazy reactions you're getting, I think it's time to look into Sin Skin. It absolutely crushes anything else on the market right now. It's flexible, it's hypoallergenic, and it just sticks really well. You'll also notice that it irritates skin much less. At this point, I won't use anything else. Try it out and go to SinnersTattooSupply.com and get 10% off your order when you use the discount code Deanna. Ten. Well, so no what uh, made you decide to move to the U.S.? Um, I was coming like every year to do guest spots. Mm -hmm. So you've been here before? I've been here before. Um, my dad was coming here when he was young before having me. Um, I have family who live here for, for uncles who live here. I have family cousins who are born and raised here and so since i'm one year old i come to the united states to disneyland or whatever yeah but um so I'm, I, I'm i'm comfortable with it but i never thought about moving until um i start having like every year i was coming for one month and then next year two months going to two cities uh three months or whatever and then one of the times i was um passing uh you know like uh, immigration in the airport and it was like last year you came for three months what are you were doing and that was no you was visiting i was in florida i was in north carolina with my family and in and, and what is true it is um we don't have industry in peru so i have to buy inks i have to buy needles i have to buy everything and bring it back Mm. So at the end of the day, it was more expensive for me to bring it to a third world country, all the all the supplies, because we didn't have a local supplier yeah. in Peru, a good quality at least, mm. not local, you know. So, but I was doing guest spots in 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 here, the U.S. One time they they told me that we're gonna be looking, you're coming here to work, and I'm like, no, I'm not coming to work. I'm just coming to learn and and and, and buy things and have two shops in Peru I'm not planning to leave that is true it was true at that moment and um and then uh I get to my uh outside of the airport and my, my cousin said man next time they don't want to let me in because they are like say why are you doing for so long here probably they, they were trying to scare me or try to me to say I was doing a guest spot or something and um and my cousin was, what about if we open a shop and then, then you can you can come here like legally as a business owner, you know? My 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 cousin uh, is a citizen, so well, we make the shop together and you know, everything that have a paper's a different status more than just a tourist. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. So I can um come in and out with no problem. And that's when everything started to 
uh, that didn't, things didn't came as I planned. We rent a place, we, we just built everything inside of the shop for... And you didn't really speak English at this point? I didn't speak well English, no. I just knew probably the numbers and the colors. Yeah. And a couple mm -hmm. words. Yeah. Uh, I, I studied French for my was a French school in Peru. So, mm. not English. Yeah. I wish it was English. Yeah, right. right <laughs> Almost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we start, okay, we have this, this, um, this uh, adventure with my cousin um, to, to open a shop and they give us the wrong information for, uh, for the zoning of the shop. Mm. So when we went for the last inspection for for fire department, they told us the zoning was wrong and you cannot open a tattoo shop in that location. But previously they told me we can. Mm. But it was not on paper. Mm. There was a mistake that lawyers later told us that you should always ask for a paper that uh, assure you that you can open a business or something that you can later, if something happened, you give me this and you have something to fight with it, you know. But it was just a verbal agreement kind of thing. And so the person who was on the, in the counter that day at the city made a mistake. Mm. And we invest thousands of dollars in the freaking <laughs> shop and no way to open a shop. And then it's when I was starting to do my papers as an artist. Um, for the O-1 visa, extraordinary ability, in, in when I was in Florida, and I was denied. I was denied on the on the visa, but I didn't want. At, at, at this point, if I was living there, I could not go back mm. because I'm already saying that I'm going to stay. Yeah. If you leave. Probably next time I was going to get in for 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 a, for a tourist, they would say no. Yeah. Mm. So I apply again. Same outcome. The third time I was approved, mm. and then it start another nightmare or of trying to um, with my lawyer to erase and pass those two um, denials that he turns into deportation yeah so for seven years I was not able to leave the country even if I was approved and legal inside mm -hmm. they could not give me the green card with two deportation cases mm. that um, that when finally they were able to remove them I got my, my green card in two weeks after that. Yeah, wow. yeah. And then, and then yeah, and then I was able to, to go visit my family, go to Peru after seven years. Wow. Uh, that's that's so insane. Hard. <laughs> I left. My, when I left, I told my mom, my family, I'm coming back in three months, six months max. That's the time they give you for, as a tourist. Six, time, six months max, I'm here. So I leave my apartment, my car, everything was there, like, for me to come back, and it didn't went, yeah, it didn't went back to Peru in seven years. Uh, <laughs> that was hard for you and your family, I'm sure. Yes, 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 yes. My mom was really sad. My mom uh, uh, got like a like a stroke of sadness. Oh my goodness. That later after you know they never told me after later when she was okay, and my mom was, was telling me like I was so sad that you were not going back that uh, she have a face paralysis or whatever but later you know she 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 went back to normal but yeah. um no. i didn't know those things until until later and yeah. could they could they visit you during that time yes yeah they could visit me but later not not right in the beginning because i didn't have money to right to bring them you know yeah yeah well, especially because you lost a lot of savings when you couldn't open oh. the shop right oh not a lot oh all savings <laughs> Uh. Because open a business in in the United States is way more expensive than open a business in Peru. Yeah, like mm. dramatically different. Yeah, mm. so I got to save a lot of years to uh, be able to open a shop here. And uh, well, it worked for the best. 
at the end, even if I was no money, everything was a was a, 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 a the the worst the worst situation that could happen that bring me to be able to go to I decide to do conventions and at least go back to it's still I was thinking maybe I have to go back to Peru this is not for me yeah I have to go back to Peru so I start doing uh, tattoo conventions mm. tattoo conventions and try to to put my name out there and and at least coming back to Peru going back to Peru um, with some trophies or something good you know yeah yeah I have something good from this trip you know and then then it's when when um my friend Tony from Tattoo Society helped me out to get in a booth that, and a sold out Philadelphia convention. Uh, and I got Best of Show at Philadelphia convention at that time. Wow. And, uh, and that was amazing. I was like, oh my God, this is what had to happen, you know? Yeah. yeah. At that, at, back in those days, was also the bigger. I think now it's, it's also the, the biggest convention. Biggest tattoo convention. The biggest tattoo convention, yes. yes. And... And uh, it was, I remember that, 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 that it was, at uh, that convention was Nico, it was Guy mm. Atchison, it was Nick Baxter, all the people that I was looking in magazines back in Peru, meet them. I have, I have a picture with them, I still send it to now that I were friends, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I show them the pictures and, oh my God, they are so funny, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So funny, so funny. Um, but, um... And then, then it's when I have a, a couple offers for, for working and staying here. Mm. One was from, I, I remember, uh, Chris Benekan from um, All or Nothing in Atlanta. I don't know, many people, I don't know if no new generation don't know much, um, All or Nothing. It was, a, it was one of the biggest shops in the country back in those days. Brandon Bond is still the owner. But over there was Joshua Carlton, it was Chris Benekan, it was um, mm. uh, Josh Woods there. It was like a strong shop doing yeah. color portraits, doing uh, videos uh, with, with images, like the beginning of social media kind of thing on, on MySpace. And yeah. they, they asked me if I want to go there. And MySpace, yes. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, wow, amazing. I would love to, to go. I did a guest spot, but then I got the, also the offer of Last Rights to work there. I was um, competing on a, on a website called Ink Nation. Mm. I don't know if you guys remember that. Mm -hmm. It was a website where you can compete. I don't remember it daily. I think or daily or, or weekly. I don't remember right now. And everybody submit their tattoos and people vote. And I was getting... Winning, winning, and they put you on the website on the fir on the on the first page of yeah. the winner of the of the of the day. Or I don't remember exactly. And I was getting a lot of attention from there. People were writing me, and uh, and I got the offer of last rights to work there. And I was like, this is what it have to be, you know. Wow. And wow. I I'm glad I didn't open the shop forever. because I probably I will open the shop and they go back to Peru, and I will be a business owner and my art will die, and. I will be having a, a good life, but not fulfilled with growth as an artist well, and, that I did in that right. And, and Paul right. Booth, he was one of those artists that you really looked up to, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, amazing. I, it, when, when I went there, it was uh, Paul Booth, uh, Toxic, and Little Dragon, and me. Nobody speaks Spanish, <laughs> and they barely speak English as well, but Paul, of course, but... Little Dragon speak very bad English. Um, wow. Toxic speak a little bit better English. Um, so I had to learn English no matter what. Wow. I'm coming from Florida. I went with my cousin. I speak Spanish. So I moved to, to New York. And um, it was a learning experience in every way. And I was the only one that um, I was uh, doing stencils. Really? All of these guys were freehanding every single piece, and I was like, oh my God, these guys are freehanding even realism. They were doing realism pieces yeah, freehanding. I was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm cheating doing a stencil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a stencil, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Said, no, no. But they were doing more, you know, di di different styles. Every everybody was doing dark images. I, more organic. More organic, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. 
I was able to to meet a lot of artists at the shop doing guest spots like Robert Hernandez and mm. and I got inspired by all those guys and my I, okay I was hired as a color portrait artist there mm. like a re, color realism because I was competing in these conventions in in color realism and uh, but little by little with the influence of those dark images I start going through the black and gray, black yeah. and gray, black and gray, yeah. black and gray. People were asking me for black and gray. And even now, I do mostly black and gray. And the style of black and gray that you do, you have like this kind of swirled texture within mm -hmm. your pieces. How did you come up with that? I didn't realize how I came up with that until somebody pointed in one of my seminars, actually. Huh. That it came from a different other, uh, from another artist that um, I really admire. Um, it came from not exactly the same, but very similar to, I don't know, you, you remember David Bolt. It is a also old school yeah. painter that he was doing airbrush paintings. Mm. He was doing airbrush paintings. He was, I'm sure if I show you one of the, of, of his flash, you will know exactly what, who I'm talking about. Got it. They do those butterflies with colorful, um, very beautiful mm. and he was doing a lot of airbrush so i started doing i got influenced by him so much that i was doing also airbrushing paintings in peru um i got tattooed by him at his house in one of my trips to florida doing guest spots um and i got so influenced by him but and later those influence came out without thinking almost like doodling like no thinking you know like yeah. something mm -hmm. uh, in my sub subconscious or something mm -hmm. that I was just moving my hand in that way and I let it go because some of my clients were saying, I like what you are doing here, you know, mm. do whatever you think. I said, can I add some movement? Some, I didn't even know how to explain it. So do whatever you like. And, and those were the pieces that actually start changing my style of, from realism to your style, my style, like a yeah. signature. Yeah. Totally. style realism kind of thing you know which is so hard to accomplish in any art form in something art that form. you look at your work and you say i know who that who from. did that yeah. yes mm -hmm. yes i'm very happy that it came naturally not even looking at it mm -hmm. and uh and i embrace it now and 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 when i have the opportunity sometimes when i do you know like a super realistic portrait of a, of a person i don't do that but if i can add into most of my pieces i'm super happy yeah yes wow so 30 years 30 years it's a long time what's uh what's next for you um many things i have in cooking you were you were telling me last night about how you you're involved with um gorilla gloves is that the name of the gorilla company? gloves yes yes a partner, a partner that. of gorilla gloves for a few years now I'm very happy with it. Um, also developing another product from Gorilla Gloves that we do most of the disposable materials that you use every day in color bl in black color. Uh, from bags to to scented wrap or stuff like that. I'm developing new other different products that doesn't exist in the market in, ex in that exact same way. They are different. Um, I'm excited about that too. And I'm gonna come up with that with another important product too that I'm super excited. Um, I I let them know when 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 it's coming. I cannot say. Yeah, yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't sign the papers yet. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm having a few meetings mm -hmm. and to to create this new product. I'm excited. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yes. Yes. And um, uh, and you just bought the Empire State convention so you're the president of that now yes i'm president of the convention now since last year um there was a great opportunity that came uh for other situations that um that i was able to with other partners to to purchase the convention and and uh, became the president so i'm excited about that too yeah before i was a a, a small a small partner yeah um always partnered with a convention but but now i am um, i have of course more voice and 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 and, wow. and happy to 
to do things without, you know, like in my, on my own way. So little by little, I'm adding things and changing a little bit the vibe of the convention. That yeah. I'm super happy about. What are some changes that you're wanting to do to the convention? Um, like last year we did like um, like um, like a panel discussion at night that I'm gonna promote it more. We were talking about that uh, also yesterday, um, where we have to talk about things in this panel discussion that is not just a, it's not a seminar. It's mm. a free thing that we can just talk at night. And um, and uh, mm. and discuss thing that is happening in the issue where it's going, where what is happening, stuff like that. Um, just what I can do, you know, seminars as always, and try to to give a little bit more ex excitement on the on the being more about the artist than being about and it's those Golden State and New York Empire State are more about that doing the more if you notice i'm sure people, everybody notices it's not, not about a band is playing it's not about that it's about tattoo artists absolutely yeah. and i wanted to be born about the art i want to have a more like like a artist showing paintings and little mm. small galleries inside of the inside of the show um i don't want to go too much as a festival of thing. i want to just to be a, a, a the stars are the tattoo artists. That's what I want it to be. That's I love that. Yeah, yeah that's what absolutely. I, want it to be. I love that. For some people, it can be maybe like people who are not tattoo artists or not artists, maybe can be a little bit boring. I mean, but it's a tattoo convention. It's, it's not, not for them. A, yeah. It's a tattoo convention. You go right. to the technology convention, you're not expecting to have, I don't know. Yeah. Somebody, bands playing. Somebody that, bands playing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you know, yeah. You want to be technology. Yeah. yeah, but coffee convention, you you spitting coffee, not like margaritas or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know? So true. Yeah. Because I get I, I get that from people. Oh man, you know you should do like bands and stuff like that. It's like it's all good, you know. But it's a tattoo convention. It's like uh, it's not what people are there for. And I, I've never really met anybody who was like, yeah, I'm really stoked to go see the sideshow at the... Right. <laughs> Unless it's a, it's a music festival, you know, yeah. that I like also. Yeah. If you put it in that way, that is amazing. Um, I was at uh, uh, Yomiko's new new convention in Venezuela. It was amazing. Mm. It was amazing. And I freaking love it. And it's a music festival and tattoo right. convention. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. But... The, the New York Empire State. I want it to be the the most not like serious in that in a way. Not serious, but I mean, it's pure. It's a, it's a it's a puristic. It's a convention. You know, it's a tattoo convention. Yeah. Absolutely. I want it to be uh, respected. I want it to be the best artist there. I want it to be that 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 that, that trophy to win the best of show means what it should mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. No. You know that. No. I was yeah, trying she knows. for many years. <laughs> you know. So do you. So <laughs> do I am, and yeah. I'm proud. Or the people, yeah. I, I get, I get goosebumps. When you look at that because I'm, I'm proud of the people who win, really deserve it. I can, I, you really deserve it. You be killing it, and I see your growth since I met you. That is very remarkable, and I'm saying not, not because I'm here, but I mean, you know, you had the trophy. It's like you, you, you beat everybody in that room. And it's awesome. one of the craziest I I it was a dream of mine since I was an apprentice and it can you imagine can you imagine it's a, it's amazing it's amazing it meant so much and it's because of the the integrity that show has the artists you guys bring and the everything everything it's a dream come true I'm, I'm so happy to hear that because it, coming from you it's, it's, it's a it's a it's a the the, the living proof that 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 what it's about uh, yeah. New York Empire State you know yeah yeah so thank you thank no, you for no no thank you thank you making guys for it wonderful <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying you know trying to to be a convention done by a tattoo artist you know yeah that is a completely different approach than a than a than um some uh, somebody who's not a tattoo artist to to, to make a convention you know that much for more the important thing is to to have great art coming from there yeah, yeah. elevate the the competition no, no competition because again i don't think it's a um 
it's a really a competition to be an artist, but to be in there and show the best of your work and, and, and put yourself in that room, yeah. just to show your work there, it's already a, a win. Absolutely. It's already to be in there. Like, really? really? Every time I, 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 I go to a convention or, or I was going before or whatever, when I was competing, I was going one step high in the, in, in the, in the ladder for sure mm. because the pressure you have in, the, in, that, in that situation. Everybody's looking at you. It's, it's, it's a lot of adrenaline. It's a lot of adrenaline tattooing there with a lot of people looking at you. Yeah. And, and I'm sure, and for me at least, it, I'm, I'm doing probably my best work with that pressure that yes. I'm doing at the shop sometimes. That's yeah. uncomfortable. You're in your comfort zone. Of course, comes comes out beautiful, but with that pressure, it comes something that like, breaks like you never even. In you. Yes, it brings something bigger than than what you think you were able to accomplish. Yes, I think. and I think that's applicable with everything. I feel like pretty much all growth happens when you're doing something that you're uncomfortable with. You know, mm -hmm. and I think it's so important as a tattoo mm -hmm. artist to. We talked about it on the last episode too, to take those opportunities, to say yes mm -hmm. to things, to do things that make you uncomfortable because that's how you grow. And, and not just tattoo artists, anybody, anybody doing anything. True, 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 true. Yeah, I think it's healthy. Yeah, It's healthy to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. and, and, and to look forward things that you never did before, you know? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. In Absolutely. everything. Any other uh, exciting things that you got in the works? Um, I have to think. Um, well, no, no, not really. Well, I always excited. Not, about not that the, those are pretty big projects. So not that yeah, that's I not impressive. <laughs> really say when, I'm really excited about one of them that I mentioned that I cannot really say yes until I have uh, everything signed. Sure. But, um, I want to do something, um, a little different than what we, we have in the market on that, mm. on that specific thing. Yeah. And, um, I'd like to, to make a tattoo tattoo procedures a little more safe with Gorilla Gloves and stuff like that. I'm giving some product that I think is going to be more like cleaner things for, for the artist um, to protect ourselves like that and and things like that. I think it's little things that we are not seeing often or people try to do it on their own. You do it on your own, try to to create those things. Yeah. Um, but um, if you can get it and buy it and just throw it out later is mm. easier and, and yeah. better, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, the convention. Um, I don't know. Trying to, I, I, I'm trying to, to, to evolve in my style every, every time. I'm trying to push mm. myself. It's something that I get excited every day. If I get the opportunity to, to have an, a, a customer that let me do what I want, if it's something that I get excited, I get excited about that. Yeah. I get excited about painting a lot lately too to a few projects that I'm I didn't start yet but I already have the we're talking about the I already have the pictures like to start painting a, a series of painting that I, that I that is uh, I'm excited and and I, I'm a jiu-jitsu practitioner and uh, it's related to that I have mm. a few things that I, I need more hours in the day to, to, sure, to do sure. you know yeah. but um, but yeah you know one day at a time yeah. Do the best you can and and, and, and all you can the best in, in in one day, you know. Absolutely. And and yeah. let people know too your art Instagram because you do incredible paintings and murals as well as tattoos. Thank What's you. What's your Instagram for that one? For that one, it's the same as my my normal. It's my name, Stefano Alcantara Art. Got it. So it, my Instagram is Stefano Alcantara in the art, not art because tattoo is art as well. Paintings and and. Murals and stuff is Stefano Alcantara art. Perfect. Awesome. Yes. Well, we're about out of time. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we before we sign off? No, I think I'm 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 happy with what we talk and uh, me too. And thank you for the people who are watching us. Mm -hmm. And I uh, thank you, you guys, for inviting me. Yeah, I thank you for it's, with you it's guys. such an honor to have you here. So, no, yeah, no, no. Thank, thank you, you guys. I'm happy to spend um, more time with you guys than in a convention, you know, that is, you know, we don't have time to talk too much and, and here sitting down also as well. Yes. And thank you. I cannot wait to go to, to come back. Yeah. Can't, can't wait, wait to, to have, have you, have back. you back. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time.